Get daily updates directly to your inbox plus subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. Could not subscribe. Try again later in valid email. Sean Goss and Jamie Murphy got Rangers debuts in the Florida Cup but it was Josh Windass who stole the show by scoring a winner against Athletic Monero. The Ibrox side began the friendly tournament on a positive note in Orlando by seeing off the Brazilian outfit. And despite Goss and Murphy starring in the first 45 minutes, Windass grabbed the limelight after the break with a super goal. The inform midfielder, who is attracting interest from England, could have scored a second late on but fired his shot wide. It was a decent workout for Graham Murdy who used 22 players in the 90 minutes. The only negative was an injury scare to Andy Halliday who took a knock and will be a doubt for their second game against Corinthians on Saturday. Around 500 Rangers fans made the journey to the States to see their side in action. And after a poor opening half, Murdy's men impressed in the second culminating in Windass' 68-minute strike. Earlier, Alfredo Morelos flashed a header over the bar and Goss had a shot saved. It was Atletico who looked more dangerous going forward. Dalcio, filling in at left back for Rangers, gifted them two chances. Thales cracked the post then, keeper Jack Anik kept out Pablo when he made a terrific stop with his legs. But after the introduction of Windass, Andy Halliday, Daniel Candias and Michael O'Halloran, Rangers stepped up a gear and were worthy of their win. Windass had already been denied by Monero No. 1 Clayton before Halliday rifled an effort past the post. But Murdy's side opened the scoring when Candias got down the left flank and drilled in a low cross. Eduardo Herrera cushioned a lay off into the path of Windass who coolly slotted it into the bottom corner. That gave the traveling support something to cheer about. And despite Pablo squandering a chance for the Brazilians in injury time, Rangers held on for the win. Five talking points. Touch of Goss. It's very early days in his stint at Rangers but on loan QPR midfielder Goss impressed on his debut. Here in Florida, he dictated the play for Graham Murdy's side in the first half. Sitting deep in the Gers engine room and orchestrating with his left foot. Despite only having a few days with his new teammates, he was demanding the ball and taking responsibility. His passing range looked good and the ex-Manchester United kid isn't afraid to have a pop at goal. From distance either, with the likes of Ryan Jack and Graham Doran still to come back from injury. Halliday back from his loan in the emergence of young Ross McCrory in that area initially it was difficult to see where Goss would fit into Murdy's setup, but he did his chances of nailing down a place no harm with a very tidy 45 minutes that would have pleased both player and manager. Second half saviors. Rangers' second half team played with far more intensity than the side who started the match. Against Atletico, Murdy changed the entire outfield lineup at the break and the players who came on particularly in the attacking third had far more desire and cutting edge. In the opening period, Alfredo Morello struggled up front and Nico Cronchar toiled in behind him. Even on the flanks, despite showing some nice touches, it was difficult for new boy Jamie Murphy to make an impact and young Serge Takayi was playing at this level for the first time. Gurr's play was a bit labored and careless in the first half, but they had more zip after the interval, with the likes of first-team regulars Daniel Candias and Josh Windass performing well. Dangerous Dalcio. Dalcio surely can't be part of Murdy's plans for the remainder of the season. The Portuguese winger is still on loan from Benfica but along with Carlos Peña. He was a poor signing by ex-gaffer Pedro Taish Inna. Dalcio was bombed after flopping in Gurr's early Europa League exit to Pragra Niederkorn. And he hasn't been seen in a light blue shirt since coming on as a late sub against Hamilton. Axis in September. He was given a chance in Florida granted. In an unfamiliar position it left back. 
but in the first 45 minutes, he was poor defensively and wasteful going forward. His two slip-ups at the back gifted Atletico a brace of gilt-edged chances. Only a post in Jack Annex legs saved them. It's clear the 21-year-old won't cut it at Ibrix and Murdy must be looking at ending the loan. Spell to free up a wage. Lone Star Rising. The return of Halliday and Michael O'Halloran will ultimately be a positive thing for Rangers going into the second half of the season. They were jettisoned by former boss Tai Shino when he took over and both reluctantly had to go on loan to Gabala and St. Johnston respectively. But Murdy has welcomed them back into the fold and even in 45 minutes in Orlando they added something to Rangers play. With the captain's armband on Halliday looked like he had a point to prove and was aggressive in his play as midfield anchorman. He passed it well, snapped into challenges and even if he's not a regular starter for Murdy in the Premiership he's a useful addition to the squad. O'Halloran is the same. He's an established performer in Scotland's top flight and will give the team a different option in attack, compared to the likes of Carlos Peña. Aaron Namain, Dalcio and others Halliday and O'Halloran are far better alternatives. Murdy finds his shape. It looks as though Murdy will settle on the 4-2-3-1 formation for the rest of the Scottish Premiership campaign if last night's win is anything to go by. Granted, it was only a Florida Cup friendly on their winter break. But this was the perfect chance to try different shapes if Murdy was considering a switch but both teams he put out in either half lined up in a 4-2-3-1 with every player knowing their specific job. So far in the job, he's tinkered with the system, attempting both the diamond and conventional 4-4-2. But this formation looks like the one he's most comfortable with and with added options in midfield. It looks the one best suited to Rangers squad. With O'Halloran back, Murphy coming in and Kande is already there. It gives the wide players freedom to express themselves. And having added Goss to his midfield, Rangers have plenty of options in there where they'll need three at any given time. Even in form Josh Windass who grabbed the winner looks to have found his best position playing off the front with two holding players behind him.